All right, well, college basketball fans, most of them anyway, got everything they could have hoped for last night. The first night of the Sweet 16 showing March Madness in its truest form. That is right. Two of the game's instant classics. Sadly, my beloved mm. Bruins fell in what was a heartbreaker to Gonzaga, who played very well. Um, a deep three by the Bulldogs with just seconds <laughs> remaining, folks. Crush the hopes and dreams. Who wrote this? <laughs> Crush the hopes and dreams of UC. LA fans across the country. All right, Kansas State was able to take down Michigan State in overtime. The back and forth contest saw some history. KSU guard Marquise Noel broke an NCAA tournament record with, get this, 19 assists. And we're just getting started. Four more games tonight to round out the Elite Eight. Everyone's asking if this year's Cinderella, that's the Princeton Tigers, can keep their magical run alive. Peter Keating and Jordan Brenner, both contributors to The Athletic and co-hosts of the Underdogs podcast, join us now to talk about all of this. Gentlemen, welcome. Um, look, no matter who you were rooting for, <laughs> get that out of the way, the games last night really were <laughs> incredible. Obviously, um, heartbreaking for me as a Bruin. But, Jordan, let's start with you. What were your reactions uh, to last night's games in the last few minutes? Great basketball. As entertaining the two games we've had in this tournament all year. I'm so sorry about your Bruins. But, you know, <laughs> they dealt some pain to Gonzaga a few years back. Uh, That's right. Leaving a crying Adam Morrison on the court. So, uh, and the Kansas State-Michigan State game was our first overtime game of the whole tournament. Marquise Noel, how can you not love a 5'8 guy who's throwing passes from every angle? I hope, you know, everyone watching had as much fun as I did. Yeah, although I have to say on that game, I was rooting for Michigan State for many reasons, but, uh, but it was a fantastic game to watch. But let's turn to tonight, Peter. What does Princeton need to do in order to move on? Well, Princeton probably has a better shot than most people think. I think people are rooting for the underdog all the time. But this is a 15 seed. I mean, no 15 seed has is, is gotten this far. And um, however, they have a couple of things going for them. They love to shoot three-point shots. They love to launch the bombs, right? And, it, and something an underdog has to do is to make its possessions count. One way to do that is open up your game, add a little more risk to get a little more reward or add a lot more risk, to get a lot more reward and shoot those threes. Um, the other thing Princeton has shown is an adaptability to uh, to exploit their opponent's weaknesses. Against Missouri, Princeton had 16 offensive rebounds. I mean, they grabbed 16 of their own missed shots. That's an extraordinary number. So uh, now playing Creighton, you know, if all Creighton needs is one kind of bad shooting night because Creighton's, Creighton's a fine team, but their excellence is rooted in their shooting efficiency. And Princeton hits the boards, uh, protects the ball very well, shoots a lot of threes. So Princeton ends up getting a possession edge. That's what they have to do. They have to hog the ball and make their shots count. But it's also a big stage and a big spotlight. How do you think Princeton will do considering the heat of the moment? I think they'll do just fine. I mean, they've, 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 they, they, if, if anything, they've made their opponents wilt and they under the pressure of having to beat a 15 seed and not, you know, mm -hmm. not go down a huge loss. So uh, I, I think, you know, that I think by, by the time players and coaches get to this stage and know what they're doing and Princeton's a really smart team with a coach who's had a system in place forever, I think, you know, I think they'll be fine. And that's a good point. You know, for all of these young players, they are the best of the best from their region of the country, right, to get to where they are now. Jordan, uh, for you, we've got two number one seeds playing tonight, Alabama and Houston. I have them both making it to the final four in my scrumpled up ruined bracket now. Um, but do you think either of those teams will get an upset tonight, considering, you know, that everyone loves to root for an underdog and these uh, gentlemen are playing really hard? Uh, I think both are in pretty good shape for tonight. Uh, they really are the two strongest teams by most measures, most analytics like them, most eye tests like them. Uh, I would probably give a little bit of an edge to Miami against Houston rather than San Diego State against Alabama. Hmm. Simply put, I just don't think San Diego State can score enough points to beat Alabama, who plays a high octane game, shoots a lot of threes. You have to be able to keep up, and, and I don't see that from San Diego State. Miami, Jim Laranega, their coach, knows a thing or two about pulling upsets. He led George Mason to the Final Four in 2006. And Houston's been dealing with a bit of injury trouble of their own. So if you're going to pick one of those underdogs, I'd lean toward Miami, but I don't see either coming through tonight. All right. Um, as Errol points out, this year has been a tough one on some people's brackets. Peter, let's start with you. How is your bracket? Have you thrown yours in the trash? You still have some teams <laughs> remaining? 
Well, our model, uh, Jordan and I have developed a statistical model that we use to try to project who's going to have underdog success mm -hmm. based on teams that have shared similar statistical traits in past tournaments. And I will wow. say that our number one upset pick in the first round was Furman, Furman University, mm. which pulled it off, made the tournament for the first time since 1980. And each day of the tournament for a while, like our model liked uh, Arkansas, liked Michigan State in the second round, mm. uh, we, we were we were right there, uh, right there, pulling off some upsets. Our model has also really liked Houston as the best team in the country all year long. I like them to win the national championship. I like Miami too. I love Miami's coach. I think Jordan's right in saying that Alabama will has a better chance of running away from San Diego State, but Houston piles up possessions, uh, has a fantastic defense. Teams like that last very deep into the tournament. And um, so, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're, we're not, I'm not doing bad. <laughs> and Jordan, what about you? I mean, you're depending, I guess, on the same analytics here, but how's your bracket? Uh, model good, Jordan bad. Uh, <laughs> my, I don't know. He's I don't always go with the model. Uh, my oh. Dukies are long gone. Marquette is gone. I mm -hmm. will say that I really like UConn coming into this tournament. I think they were woefully underseeded as a four. And I think other than those two number one seeds, I think they would be my pick to win the national championship right now. So keep an eye on them against Gonzaga and going forward potentially. All right. Well, folks have to listen to your Underdogs podcast. Great to chat with you both.